welcome back uh, what I thought I would do in this video is first of all talk about my A-level experience as I know some of you will be either returning or even starting your A-levels or equivalent depending on what you are doing but what I thought I would also do because as I mentioned in my previous video on Freshers Week some of you will be starting university and you may be wondering about what the difference is between A-levels or equivalent and universities so I'm going to talk about that in this lowdown on A-levels versus university. Just starting off talking about my A-level experience and um, so the way it worked for me and probably works overall for A-levels is uh, I was there for two years uh, at my local sixth form and in my first year I did four subjects so I did psychology, English literature and law and I also did mathematical studies. Now I needed to do that because I was doing psychology uh, and what happened was after the first year I you would normally drop uh, one of your uh, subjects um, because the mathematical studies was only a year anyway that was kind of like already uh, done for me so for A2, uh, AS being first year, A2 being second year for A2, I just did English literature, psychology and law. From GCSE to A level, it's a big step as it is. Um, it's certainly you know more difficult. It was certainly more difficult for me, uh, but I enjoyed uh, each of these subjects. So for psychology, we looked at things like social psychology, um, so matters of about obedience and prejudice, for example. Uh, cognitive psychology, so memory was the main focus, which was quite interesting. For law, um, I did in my AS, I did English legal system and sources of law. And then for A2, I did criminal law. One of the questions I've sometimes been asked is, do I need to do uh, A-level law to study law at university? And the answer is, no, you don't. Um, when you go through the application process, um, everyone's treated the same. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you've been in contact with the law beforehand or not. Um, you know, they're looking at your experience overall and they're looking at how you do well in the interviews and how you did well, well did you do in your AS exams, uh, for example. If you have studied the law, um, when it comes to the interview process, you might be given reading and they'll probably give, and they did for me, they'll give you it on every law you haven't studied deliberately um, because they want to give everyone equal uh, opportunity. So you don't need to. Um, certainly for studying law at university, it can be helpful to study an uh, essay-based subject. So English literature is what I did at, uh, for my A-levels as one of my three subjects. And I enjoyed that. So we looked at uh, a streetcar named Desire, a fellow uh, over the two years, and other uh, texts. And they were very interesting. I enjoyed analysing those. I also actually did uh, an EPQ or extended project. Um, and what that involved, uh, you had the choice of either doing a 5,000 word essay or some kind of like project, uh, like uh, like physical project or uh, so to speak, and then like a thousand words or so to accompany that. And mine was based on our UK anti terrorism laws and whether or not there is a balance between national security and the rights of the individual. Uh, and I enjoyed that, and I'm certainly glad to do that. And universities certainly uh, do take that into consideration when they're looking at all that overall picture, uh, alongside you know if you've got if you need to have interviews at the university, your uh, previous exam results, things like that. Turning now to the differences between A levels and university, uh, starting to look at first of all the actual learning and how you learn at uh, university compared to when you learn for your A levels and to start off with you've obviously got lectures uh, for university so quite often uh, for me I was in you know like quite uh, large lecture theatres with you know loads of other students which is very much different to being in a classroom with you know let's say 20 other students or 30 other students so there's that physical difference there and there's a difference in numbers a difference in feeling and another thing with lectures is you don't it's up to you uh, whether you go to your lectures obviously it's advisable to go to your lectures and uh, to learn and to just you know certainly for law it's you know just be, it's fantastic to hear from the lectures about their thoughts on a particular area of the law the thoughts of a particular case which they sometimes add on 
uh, as they're going through a particular uh, subject, uh, for example, in criminal law. Um, but it, it, at the end of the day, it's up to you whether you go to your lectures, whereas for A-levels, um, you know, the system is that, you know, you, you know, you'd need to be at your, uh, at your different lessons because there'd be a register uh, to mark you in and to, to ensure, you know, to make sure and to check whether or not everyone is in. Whereas at uh, university, there isn't a register. Um, there's no register. There's, there isn't someone checking to make sure everyone's there, you know, because at the end of the day, it's, it's more of the that independence at university. It's up to you to decide, you know, what you want to do and what le lectures you want to attend. So there's like that element of um, more freedom and more independence at university. And the second thing when it comes to how you learn, um, obviously it, it, there's different forms of learning at university. So for example, at Cambridge, uh, you've got lectures, as I've mentioned. You also got supervisions, small groups meet up uh, for about an hour uh, every week per module. So I had two per week uh, for my first year, and that's a good opportunity to discuss, uh, to go through areas you, uh, you're unsure about, get things clarified. Supervisions are quite particular to Cambridge, uh, but universities will ha will likely have something equivalent. Um, some universities will have seminars on, for example. Whereas uh, when it comes to um, A levels, it's most of the time it's you know it's classroom studying um, that you get. Um, so the actual way you learn um, at university is very much different uh, compared to A levels. Uh, the second thing uh, to consider is the workload, uh, and it goes without saying that university the workload is you know, is much greater, uh, and and the reason for that is. You know, there's a lot more of a need for you to go away and do independent reading. Um, so going through, uh, you know, just to take law as an example, going through the judgments of a court case, going through articles written by academics and others. So there's a lot more of a need for you to go away, take the lecture notes as the basis, uh, but then go away and add to it by doing research and, you know, doing that research that you need to do, for example, to prepare for supervision as well. Whereas with A-levels, yes, you'll do reading. Uh, I did, you know, I had uh, some A-level textbooks, but it's probably, it's on a lower scale uh, compared to university. And I think the main reason for that is when it comes to university studying, you are thinking about things, you, you, there's a lot more thinking going into it in the sense that you need, you're thinking more in a more detailed way, you think about more of the nuances and more of the complexities around different areas of the law, for instance. Uh, you, you, you do go in detail, and you know, uh, I went in detail for my levels, but not to the same extent as I found when it comes to studying at university. It's much different at university. Because um, you're thinking about, uh, because you're doing that extra reading, you're being, certainly being exposed to more different points of view and more areas of discussion. Uh, and also because the exams are different. So, for example, for when I did A level law, um, now it, it's changed. It has changed since I was there. But when I did A level law, the questions were different. They were law marked questions compared to university, where you're spending at least forty five minutes per question uh, within the three hour total time period for each exam. So. You, by just that, you know that you, there's a lot more needed for you uh, to do, a lot more research that you need to do for university compared to A levels. Third thing is independence. As I've mentioned, I mentioned this in my last video as well. You know, it's just a big step from university. Uh, for, you know, with university from A levels, it's a big step in terms of not just ac uh, academic wise, but also in terms of for example, moving to a new place or meeting new people, experiencing new uh, new things, um, facing new opportunities, facing new challenges as well. And one thing that comes with that is you're much more independent when it comes to university life compared to A-level life. A-level compared to GCSE, yeah, yeah, there's a little bit more independence there because you are maturing and so, you know, there's a lot more, you do feel a lot, uh, a lot more independent in that sense. but. Compared to university, you know, the independence is much uh, greater at university. Uh, and that's because, you know, by that point you are 18, around 18, you, you know, you're an adult, and so and things are changing. And I mentioned the last week about homesickness, uh, for example. And, and because overall the 
you know, com A levels compared to university is a bit much, much bigger jump compared to A levels against GCSEs. Um, and so it does feel like a big step, but at the same time, there's you know great opportunities when it comes to university life. Uh, probably more so um, compared to A levels. Um, you know, just Cambridge, for example, you've got the Cambridge Union, you've got, got a wide variety of societies, sports societies, debating societies, you know, religious societies, things like that. Um, so whilst it's a big step and whilst it's, it'll be challenging, there's great opportunities as well at uh, university compared to A levels. So I, ho I hope that's helped. I hope that is uh, just giving you a bit of a understanding of the differences between A levels and university. If you have any questions, anything you want clarifying, put them in the comment section below and I will try and answer them as soon as I can. Do check out my previous video on Freshers Week, uh, in particular if you are uh, soon to be heading off to university for your first year and you want to know what is Freshers Week. And don't forget to do the usual things like liking the video, sharing it, follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and subscribe to the channel. Keep you know, hit that notification bell to keep up to date when new videos and new vlogs eventually come out when I head back to university for my second year. And I hope you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.